In this video, I wanted to mathematically derive the emitted variable bias, which we've spoken about in previous videos. And I wanted to do so by means of an example. So let's say in our particular example here, we are interested in evaluating the or estimating the effect of an individual's level of education on an individual's level of wages, which they actually obtain. And remember what we're trying to do here is that there is some sort of population. And within that population, there is a true value of the effect of one extra year of education on an individual's level of wages, which I call beta 1p. But the problem here is we don't have the whole population. We only have a sample from that population. And by doing some sort of method on this sample, we're trying to estimate this population parameter beta 1p. Okay, so let's say as a sort of first stab at this problem, we estimated the following relationship on our sample. So let's say we said that an individual's level of wages is determined by solely their level of education. But let's say there are a whole sort of host of other idiosyncratic factors, which we know we're not including in our relationship. So that's represented by this sort of error term UI. And we know that if we estimate um, using least squares, beta 1p, we will get that beta 1 hat is just equal to beta 1 plus the sum of i equals 1 to n of an individual's level of education i minus an individual's level of education on average. So summing across all points in our sample times this sort of idiosyncratic error divided by the sum again from i equals 1 to, this should be n up here, of an individual's level of education minus the average level of education or square. And we've derived that previously in other examples. Okay, so let's talk about what the sort of problem with this particular relationship is. Well, in truth, in the population, there is probably a population process which is a little bit more complicated than the one we've specified for us a regression on the sample. Namely that an individual's level of wages depend not solely on an individual's level of education, it also depends on an individual's level of innate ability. So let's say there is sort of another variable which is important in determining an individual's level of wages, that which I'm gonna call ability. And furthermore, the effect of an individual's level of innate ability on wages is likely to be positive. So an individual who are sort of innately more intelligent tend to do better in terms of the wage which they actually earn. Furthermore, we can sort of hypothesize that there is some sort of positive relationship between an individual's level of innate ability and education. And we we can all sort of think about exceptions of where this is, isn't necessarily true, but in general, people who are sort of more academically intelligent or more academically interested tend to choose to spend more time in education. So there is some sort of positive relationship, although not exact, between these two particular variables. And we're going to talk about in the next video how this sort of positive relationship between education and a variable which we have included in our and regression equation and a variable which we haven't included in our regression equation which is important so it's important in determining wages means that we're going to have omitted variable bias and we're going to prove that in the next video. I'll see you then.